6 o'clock, and he will change your life. Pastor David's about to preach to us. Let's preach with him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet right now. Give the Lord a hand cap of praise. Come on now. I, don't, I, 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 I dare you to find scripture where they shouted after the victory. I dare you to find scripture where they waited until they won, and then they shouted. I dare you. Go home today. Do some homework. Come back tonight. See me at 6 o'clock. Find me scripture where they did not shout before the miracle. So somebody needs to get a hold of it today. That goes right along with what God has for us today. If you open your Bibles or look on the screen, either way. Uh, Mark chapter 5 in the Amplified. I'm going to read. They came to the house of the synagogue official. And he looked with understanding at the uproar and commotion and people loudly weeping and wailing in mourning. When he had gone in, he said to them, why make a commotion and weep? The child has not died, but is sleeping. They began laughing scornfully at him because they knew the child was dead. But he made them all go outside and took along the child's father and mother and his own three companions and entered the room where the child was. Taking the child's hand, he said tenderly to her, Talitha Kumi, which translated from Aramaic means, Little girl, I say to you, get up. The little girl immediately got up and began to walk, for she was 12 years old, and immediately they who witnessed the child's resurrection were overcome with great wonder and utter amazement. 2 Samuel chapter 6. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and David was girded with the linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, hello, and with the sound of the trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised in her heart, despised him in her heart. I want you to notice right there, it did not say David's wife. It says Saul's daughter. And they brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in the place in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And then David returned to bless his household. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself today in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants, as one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovereth himself. And David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father and before all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. Now, I didn't put the next scripture in there, but if you read the next scripture, it says, And from that moment on, Michael was barren. Nehemiah chapter 2. 18 through 20 says, Then I told them of the hand of the, my God, which was a good upon me. Also the king's word that he had spoken unto me. And they said, Let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. But when Samballot the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, no right, nor memorial in Jerusalem. Lord, right now, Lord, I ask you to anoint my heart, anoint my words, Lord Jesus. Anoint our ears to hear. Lord, but help us, Lord Jesus, to have the courage to be doers of the word today, Lord. Lord, I ask you right now, Lord, to let our hearts be fertile ground for your word, Jesus. Lord, that signs, miracles, and wonders. Lord, that a turnaround is about to happen in this place, Lord. And I thank you for all of it. And everybody said amen. If you're going to preach with me, go ahead and give a clap unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to hopefully speak a brief moment. My, my title today is My Response. My Response. I, uh, I, I. There's actually so much that I could have put down. There's so many scriptures I had to cut it back. I could have, I could, I could have made this a two-part sermon. Because in the Word of God, it's so rich. And you're missing out if you're not in the Word of God. I, 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 a precursor to what I'm about to tell you. Everything I'm telling you is out of the Word of God. And if you have an issue in your life, you need to get in the Word of God. Because it's the Word is God. The Word what God you need to get that word on the inside of you. Some of your parents need to learn that the Bible says that if you train them up in the way they should go, 
When they get older, they're going to come on back. They ain't going to depart from. That's the part where we miss out on how do we train them up in the way they should go. Jesus Christ said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. You find that when Jesus comes, and I read to you the Amplified, but in the King James Version, after he says, Talitha Kumi, the Bible then says, which is translated, arise. All right? In the Greek, that word arise is a verb. And it means, if you break it down, it actually means to rise up out of sleep, to be aroused out of disease or death. And all of a sudden, I started, I, I, got, I went down a little rabbit hole this morning just for my own personal. Talitha, Talitha Kumi. You know, it's Aramaic. It, it's not a whole, but, but that's what they spoke, that it was common tongue. All right. And in a moment when Jesus Christ had his moment in there, and Mark is recording the words, and, and he's getting him, and it says it's dictated by Peter, and, and all of a sudden Mark is writing these words down. He, he felt the unction of the Holy Ghost, because the Bible says it's written by the Spirit of God set upon men. And he felt... The reason to leave in the Aramaic, to leave the kumi, which meant daughter arise. But what he had told them before was that she was not dead, that she was asleep because it was against the law for him to touch a dead body. You got to read your word if you're going to find out. You got to understand that what our response is today, when we walk up to a situation that everybody else is laughing about, they're all crying about, and they're telling us that there's no hope in it, you need to get down in the word of God and realize you need to speak the truth is that arise, be not dead. In other words, in a moment where something is dead or, or is presumed dead, I was going to name this uh Laugh who laughs last or laughter or whatever. Um, I felt that God had a message for us today that there are plenty of situations in your life right now where you feel like that you showed up with a little bit of faith. And when you showed up, there were people in there already crying about it being gone. You got friends and you got family. Some of the hardest things to ever get over is friends and family. If a, per, a stranger come in here right now, I've said it a million times before, and slapped me in the face, I can let it go. But let one of you try to touch me. Right? Let, let, well, let a friend or, or a brother or, or somebody supposed to be a Christian, whatever, come in here and put their hands on you. All of a sudden, you'll, you'll, you'll do it to the dirty. You'll go all the way, right? We'll have to pull you off of him. Lord, help him, Jesus. No. But if a stranger walk up to you and slap the fire out of you, Charles, you'll let it go. For at least a moment. Why is that? Because we feel so much pain and hurt. We're going to tie to emotion. And in a moment, whenever Jairus gets there and his daughter's dead and Jesus walks in, he tries to stop the inevitable of what they were saying about the situation. There was too much negativity going on inside the house. These people were in there mourning, doing their job. They were talking about this man. This man went to Jesus. And in a moment, he followed along and had to stand and wait for one person to get their healing. Then he goes a little while and he had to wait for another person to get their healing. And now he gets Jesus to the situation, and when he walks in, Jesus tells him that, oh, you ever feel like that? You feel like a situation? You ever spoke some faith in your own life? Just felt all of a sudden it rise up? I'm going to make it out of this, you know? I know this might be a little tough right now. You tell your wife or your spouse or whoever and tell your friends or your, your friends at school or whatever, and all of a sudden you're like, you know what, I'm, it don't really matter. I know this is a tough situation, but I feel like God's about to do something. There's always somebody that go to crying and moaning and telling you that it's dead. And the minute you speak faith, the first thing they want to do is laugh scornfully. In Psalms 22, it talks about, uh, they say that it's almost a picture of, of how Jesus felt about going to the cross. They said, they laughed me to scorn like they did whenever he was on the cross. They cast lots for my, for my vesture and other, my, you know, and it spoke about how they were going to laugh. And it, it, you ever been there and all of a sudden you're frustrated? And it's always come from people inside the house. I'm talking about dreaming dreams today, dreaming big. There's some thing that you are promised. There are some things that are going on in your life, and you're going to find out the toughest part about it is, is who's on your side. On. Whose team are you rooting for? Right. You need to ask that. I'm going to tell you right now, if you ever have marriage problems, that's one of the first things you ought to ask yourself. Whose team are you rooting for? It's a team sport. It ain't a me and me. 
It ain't, it ain't you and I. It ain't, it ain't you against me. It's a team sport. The Bible says that we are one flesh. Oh. And all of a sudden we have these issues and we're looking around and, well, who team are you really on? And you'll find out that in moments of, of, of it seems like the culmination of a miracle about to happen. You got Jesus in the house, and the first thing you find out is, is those that were with you ain't for you. Tell me I'm lying. Try to make a change in life. Be an addict and stop doing drugs and see how many friends fall off. Whenever your money ain't for them no more. I don't know how many ex-addicts you got in the house, but all of a sudden you, 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 you pull your money together when you're down bad. Just in case you remember. I know some of y'all may remember. I'm a, you pull your money, so all of a sudden, though, when you're going to get right, the money done got funny for everybody else. And you'll find out real quick who's on your side and who ain't. Oh, you trying to do better? Well, they'll try to pull you down. In a moment, they will laugh at the miracle that is about to happen in your life. There are dreams that you have in your life for your children, for your marriage, for a business, for your job, for prosperity. For you know what? You got dreams in your life that the people who are dying in their sin right now in your life, that they're going to make it. But every time you turn around, you say, you know what? I think Bill's coming back. Or I, I think Sandra's going to make it. I think if I can just fast a little bit more, if I can just pray. You know, the pastor gave me a good word about faith, and he lifted my soul. And I can believe for this. And all of a sudden, sudden you'll find somebody want to rain on your parade they want to laugh at the fact that you believe that a god i got a friend of mine who's an atheist on facebook and some of the stuff he says would if y'all read it y'all probably would be down bad just hateful against this man and i don't delete him because we friends because i care for him but it, they believe that you they, they they laugh at you because you believe in a mystical figure Somewhere that you can't see is about to do something. But I'm telling you right now, Jarius had already seen miracles in other people's lives. You had already seen somebody else's faith come to culmination. And in that moment, now you're thinking, you know what? I'm bringing Jesus with me. That's what you need to do to your dream. You got to bring Jesus with you. If Jesus ain't with you, you got to get something in order. You got to get something in order if Jesus ain't with you. You're living the wrong dream. But that's... I'm just telling you, if Jesus ain't on your boat, you're in the wrong boat. Jump out. Yeah. Just be like Peter and walk on off to another boat. He spoke in Aramaic, but they recorded Aramaic because it was simple, it was powerful, it was to the point. In a moment where your dream is in jeopardy from inside sources. It's not outside. There are people in the house that's against it. In that moment, he spoke with authority, daughter, rise up. And then when Mark translates it into the Greek, he makes sure that he used the right Greek word yes, to get everybody know that, yes, Jesus simply has the power to speak simple words, but yet in the moment, it means exactly what it needed to be, that something's about to rise up, a miracle is about to happen. We're about to go on past it. She gets up, she gets hungry, she got to eat. I, uh, I, I pointed it out, but... One of the hardest things to ever go through, I imagine, in life is to have people close to you just doubt you, you know? I read the scriptures about David and Michael, and I pointed out the fact that the, the, whoever wrote the Bible and in 2 Samuel, whatever, they made sure to let you know whose daughter she was. But we all know that she was David's wife. If you read further, earlier, earlier on, Saul give Michael to David. That was his prize for killing Goliath and being the man, whatever. And in and, and, and a moment, though, but in this passage, they let you know right off the bat that she's Saul's daughter. Sometimes you got to be very careful about who's in your life, what kind of kinship they are to you. If they're supposed to be your friend or your wife or your husband or your cousin, but they acting like somebody else's daughter, then you need to start realizing that her daddy led her down a path where he misused the spirit of God. Now, you got to read Samuel to get all this. you got to get in that word. But if you read earlier on, they tried to bring, this is what I love about David. He didn't give up. They tried to bring the ark back. He was anointed king. He needed, the, he needed the spirit of God. He needed the presence of God in his dream in his life. He had a dream. He already built a tent waiting on it. And they tried to bring it back on a cart. Knowing good and well what the word of God had already been told and passed down to them. Knowing good and well that in Exodus it said what the word, it has to be carried on two sticks and it has to have Levites on both ends. And you gotta, there's a protocol. There's something that you got to do to get to where you want to be. 
And in that moment, it, it fails utterly, and it stays three months at Abinadab's house. But in three months, this is for y'all of y'all that think you done messed up so much. You think that you put your hand on God's business, and all of a sudden you messed up, and you, you put God's business back down. You can't even imagine what that's like unless you've been through it. I've been there. Where you feel like the hand of God is on you, and you mishandle the things of God, and you put it on somebody else's shelf in their house. You put it up for safekeeping, you thought. But it could have easily went the other route. Three months later, David says, you know what? We're doing this thing right. The response to handling the God's business had to be right. And in his response, he went ahead and danced every so many paces. And he sacrificed every so many paces. And he stripped off who his kingly position was to let God and everybody know that he was nobody compared to what we were carrying in. If you're going to dream big today, you're going to have to take off the big eyes and, and, and the big me's and big eyes, all those things. You're going to have to take off your kingly robes, this position, and the things that you think you're seeking are not for you. If the presence of God is not with you, you're not being able to be going in the rate of the dream that you have. I promise you this. If you're not ready, though, you'll get to a point where your response will be you put it up in somebody else's house. You get into the city, though. And Saul's daughter, they might have done that for David's sake, you know. Saul's daughter, my wife, my wife sees me and she is mad and she despises me. And you'll find out that if you're not careful, you'll side right up to people in your life that on the inside despise the gift and the things that God is trying to do for you. You're trying to lead in the spirit into your home. Listen to me right now. I'm right, on, I'm right on target. Somebody needs to listen to me. You're trying to lead godly things into your house, and people are watching afar, up high, lifted up in a, a, a human position. People who think they have authority over what they can say and do to you. And in that moment, they despise you. But it's not you they despise. They despise the fact that they can't get down there, and they can't dance before the Lord because it ain't in them. You need to know who your headship is. Her headship was David. It wasn't Saul anymore. I want you to listen to me. It was not Saul anymore. She was married. David was her headship. But it said that she was Saul's daughter, which if you study out Saul, says a lot. Because he used and abused his power and mishandled the things of God. So she wasn't raised to, to handle the things of God right, and that's fine. But in a moment where she despised him and come against him, and she tried to drive a wedge in between them. In that moment, what did he tell her? What was his response? Oh, I'll be more base than this. In other words, I'll humble myself more than this. I'll strip all the way down if I got to. I'll lose all these kingly robes. I'll go ahead and sacrifice it all for the dream that I have in God, for the spirit that is with me right now. I will sacrifice everything for the anointing that guides me and the fire that lifts me. I'll get as close as I can to the dirt. Before I ever allow you to come in between me and my God. And I don't know who that's for, but I'm telling you right now. If you got people who are elevating themselves to you above from a balcony somewhere. And they're looking down on you. And they're telling you all you. You know what? You're just, you're just doing that for a show. You're just out there trying to impress. That's what she was saying. You're trying to impress people. You're up there making a big deal about you, but I'm telling you right now, when you're leading God into every situation, you know what, God, this is where you told me to go. I'm going this way. And he said that he is, we sang about it earlier. He was, he is, and there he is to come. He knows the end from the beginning. That means that you cannot go nowhere without God being there. And when you're leading your family and you're leading your life and you're heading towards your dream, do not respond. Well, baby, I'm sorry. I'll try better next time. Or, or, or I, I'll tell you what, I, next time I'll let, I'll let a priest or somebody, I'll, I'll let somebody else uh, lead the altar. Uh, I'll let somebody else do our sacrificing for I'll, well, We'll just watch one of them televangelists or something, and we'll just we'll put in a little bit of time, and, and I'll pray before we eat. And all of a sudden, you've given over your authority. You've given over the, the leadership that you had in your own dream. You're sacrificing what God has said. 
because somebody has lifted themselves up in your eyes and told you that you're just doing it for show. Am I the only one that's ever been told? Oh, you're just down there trying to make a big deal. Or you're make, or why you make all that noise when you pray? Or why you get all loud? Or why you dance around? Or why you hoop and holler? Because you don't know where God brought me from. You don't know where I've been. You don't know the mistakes that I made three months ago. But thank God he allowed me to carry him into my situation. I don't know about you, but we need to praise God that he still loved us. That he still guides us. That he's bringing us out. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give a hand clap of God right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's so much I can say about the response that we're required. The sin in your life, the response for that is repentance. Bought and paid for by Jesus Christ. That's the response. What I loved about Nehemiah was, he said, the hand of God is upon me. Some of you need to realize who put their hand on you. Good Lord Almighty, you're not in the house unless God drew you. The Bible said that no one cometh unto the Father unless he be drawn, right? Hello, this is the word of God here. You got to read it to get it. All of a sudden you realize that if you're in the house and you're watching online or you're watching this video six months down the road, God has put his hand on you. He has something for you. And if Nehemiah said, the hand of God is upon me. Ooh, and we're going to build. Some of you need to realize that your dream is stacked up out back. It's in the yard. It's got, yeah, it's got, it's got, it's got definitions and it's got a whole workout plan. God's got the plan in mind. He said, I have a plan for you. It's a plan to prosper you. It's a plan for good. But you got the material out in the backyard. And you're going to let people who don't even have no benefit from it. They see, he told them suckers straight up. He told them straight up. He said, you know what, sucker? He said, you guys, that they weren't even Jews. They weren't nobody. You have no place in Jerusalem. You have no account. You have nothing. In other words, you got, you got no claim to anything that I'm about to do. You don't even know what you're talking about because the hand of the Lord is upon me. And in this moment, I have to realize that God said it, so it's going to happen. Oh, I'm telling you right now, you ever try to put them stupid shelves together from like Ikea and Walmart? I put a, I put a few together, and you got them J's and them K's and them, them M screws and them M6 screws and all that. And you're trying to put this thing together, and you get frustrated. My, my son's behind the camera. We've been putting a lot of stuff together in our house, even my daughter. Hey, bestie. And my, we put a lot of stuff, and you get frustrated when you don't know how it goes together. Right? Them things is ratchet. They raggedy. Nobody wants to put those things together. You would rather go and spend the extra 20 bucks to buy a shelf that's made together. You, if you ain't got a truck, you'll borrow somebody's truck and go and get it. But I'm telling you right now, there's something in the process of when God is working it out between you and him, and you got to say, you know what, the hand of the Lord is upon me. That, that, that means that whenever I move and I take a step forward and I'm in his plan, that that's my response. Is oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're saying about me. Or oh, I know you're talking about how it's all in ruins. I'm telling you right now, Jerusalem was tore down. The dream was desolate. But there he was in the house serving wine, doing some little pitiful job for the king. And all of a sudden, God impressed upon his heart. Put his hand on him. There's a dream that my people suffer. And there's Jerusalem needs to be built. There's things for God that I have to do. Can I go? And I'm telling you right now, if you ever put your hand to God's business, we talked about it this morning, but God doesn't give you the provision until you're all the way up into the middle of the dream. I said it earlier. Unless you shout, there's no triumph. Oh, I know it's the other way around. We wait and clap when they hit the home run. But in God's business. In the spiritual kingdom, it doesn't work that way. Before you ever get up to the field and you get up to bat, you got to be praising and worshiping him. And when you get up there, you look at the scoreboard, and God's already won for you. And the other side's got zero, and you're winning. You're a winner, but it doesn't happen unless you show up to the game. Boy, some of us are sitting on the bench, not even with the uniform on. Tell I sure wish I could play. Huh? Tell me I'm lying. Half the time, most of y'all want to do something for God. God been trying to get you to do something for years. 
Huh? We do first steps around here for a reason, to plug you into something. I'll plug you into chicken, plug you into whatever we got to plug you into. When we start barbecues, I'm telling you right now, that's a business all on its own. That's a heavy, heavy burden that this church does. And poor pastor gets out there and switches behind off half the time. And, and, and it's, it's hard work. Tell me I'm lying. It's hard work. You ever work one? It's hard work. Even the women part, when you got to put all in place, yeah, that's hard work. <laughs> we got all that in here. You know what that does? That funds evangelism. That funds, that, funds, that funds not only Maurice, but that funds here. That funds furniture. That funds these chairs. That makes the lights turn on. That makes all these other things happen. You know what that does? That reaches your family. Well, not only does it reach your family, if you're in the middle of the dream, you're in the middle of the promise. They didn't possess the promised land until they went across. Some of you are sitting on go. Stop sitting on go and go. Your response, oh my Lord Jesus, I'm about to have a fit. Your response right now to what God is doing in your life is to move. You got to do something. When we start talking about receiving the Holy Ghost, I tell people all the time, you got to say something. You can't. I'm, it don't work that way. I'm sorry. It don't. It says that the Spirit gave the utterance. In other words, the Spirit was on the inside and it started to work on the outside. But until you do something, it don't happen. That's just a little Bible lesson for you real quick. My response to sin is, is repentance. Some of us haven't read Acts enough. We haven't read Acts enough. What is our response to when you find out that Jesus did all those things for you? The Bible says that when they found out that they crucified the Messiah, they were pricked in their heart. In other words, they felt bad. They felt like they had done something wrong because they did. And half the time when we feel like we've done something wrong, we look around and see if there's any witnesses and kick some dirt over top of it and move on. That's not the response. They said, Ben and Brother, what, what shall we do? Oh, he said, I got, I got it for you right here. You got to repent. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. And then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Then he said that the power, that's what he told him when he went to the other room. The response to what, what are you going to do when Jesus is gone? That's what they were wanting to know. He said, well, go to Jerusalem and tarry. Some of you haven't tarried long enough to realize that God's about to punch you right in the chest and knock all of that stuff out that you don't need no more. And in that moment, you got power to live, power to live, power to move on, power to overcome. What is the response to being powerless? Is get the power, right? If you ain't got electricity, what you got to do? Pay the bill. What is your response in the situation if you need healing? I'm, I'm going to step on your toes real quick. You have to believe that God did what he did, and he does what he says he does. And in a moment when we agree, if you ever hear me pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the word of God, by the stripes that he took on Calvary, you are healed in Jesus' name. That's all the scripture I can give you on healing right there in one big old bag. But your response to it is, I need it. Give it to me. Some of us aren't even willing to dig around in the dirt a little bit. Maybe we need to live with it for 12 years like that old girl. Maybe we need to go ahead and spend up all our money. Maybe we go ahead and just waste all our time. Until you've wasted your time and your living, half of us don't get it. I'm trying to tell you today, the response to that is to shake loose of ritualistic religion and go ahead and seek Jesus. Seek Jesus. If you can't make it to church, you need to make it to Jesus. I'm going to tell you right now, we have so many problems in the church. I ain't talking about this church, but the church international. Every church got problems. We ain't got no problem. We're perfect. <laughs> this is a joke. This is the part of the sermon. This is the jokes. But you got a problem. And we sing that song all the time, and we all cry and get, <sighs> and we start stammering lips. He's a way maker. Huh? Oh, we love that song. We need to sing that tonight and put that in. He's a way maker, right? It's the truth. But we'll sit right here. <sighs> Waymaker. Brother Don says, come down front. The men of God are going to lay hands on you. We're going to go ahead and take into effect to James chapter 5. We're going to go ahead and, and live the word of God. We're going to go ahead and take the word of God, roll it up, put it on ourselves and say, you know what the word says? That if I have the elders of the church anoint me, that I shall be healed and that my, my sins will be forgiven me. That's what the word of God says. Here we are, sitting in our pew. Ooh, way back. 
your response in your situation dictates the future of your dream. You Facebook it, write it down, whatever you want. If you're given a sign, if you're getting and you don't quite believe and you're given a sign, and then you ask for another one and God does you another sign, what do you do? Well, you get your stuff up and you go to war, right? You've been given a sign by the word of God, by the room of testimony. There's a whole crowd of testimonies in this room right now, but yet there is no reason why you should have a little cough. My response in my situation says that if I will just come to Jesus, if I'll just make it to Jesus, if I can just come to the front, if I can just make it to church, if I can just repent one more time. My response says what I really believe. Now, either we believe what we say we do or we don't. And and I'll help you out. If you don't know you do, You're in the best place ever because you're willing to try either way and be safe from any kind of responsibility. (laughs) If you're a believer and you don't believe, oh, I don't want to hang out with you. And if you're a sinner, most of us Christian folk won't hang out with you either. But if you don't quite know which way you are on it, you you know Brother Victor got his healing, but you ain't quite sure whether or not he can touch you. If you're in the I don't know area, I got something for you. Your response is, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I don't, I, I'm willing to give you a shot, Lord. I, I may not know all the these and the thous and the this and the those. I, I may not be able to be uh, tell you what the Aramaic means and the Greek and all that, Brother David said, and all that good stuff. And I may not be able to understand all that. But I'm willing to go ahead and give you the response is, is that I need God to move in my life today. And in that moment, God can do more with your obedience than he can do anything in the world. I'll prove it to you. When Lazarus came forth, nobody had faith. Nobody believed. They were all crying and mad at Jesus. He said, if you roll the stone back, if you roll the stone back, I'll raise the dead. If, If you'll do your part. If you'll just go ahead and say, Lord, I believe. If you'll go ahead and say, Jesus, come to my situation. If you'll go ahead and be like Nehemiah and say, the hand of the Lord is upon me. It doesn't matter what you got to say. I'm going to go ahead and walk on down to my promise and go ahead and possess the land. If you'll just listen to God and listen to the men of God in your life, and they'll tell you right off the bat, why don't you just, oh, I'm, tell you, I'm, a, I'm not going to hurt nobody's feelings now. I'm trying not to. But if you'll just show up, if you give God 30 days, Show up every time the door's open. I don't care if we have first steps here and you want to come and work it. You show up every time these doors open for any event, as long as it's not gender specific. You show up every time for 30 days. I will guarantee you that God will move mountains in your life. That he will heal, set free, and deliver. Try me. Try God. The only way you're going to find out is respond. What is your response today? What is your response? Are, are, are you going to be like, like them and be like, you know what? We know that he stinketh. That's what they said. Jesus, he stinketh. We don't want to, uh, I'm, 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 I'm wrapping up. We don't want to uncover some things in our lives because that thing stinks. That thing I talked about kicking dirt on earlier, God has been asking you to roll back the stone and let me take out those dead things that's in your life. Some of your skeletons that ain't quite skeletons yet, they're still decomposing. you got issues in your path, and you're wondering when God is going to elevate you. I'm sorry, baby, the stairs is closed right now. Listen to me. When the stairs are closed, that means that there's something behind you that you need to go ahead and roll back the stone. You say, you know what, God, whatever it is, if I don't even know it, Jesus, I'm asking you to bring it to my mind right now, Lord. If it's chewing the wrong type of gum, Lord, if it's wearing the wrong type of clothes, if it's smoking, if it's whoredom, if it's whatever, if it's spiritual wickedness, if I'm entertaining things that I should not, Lord, help me. I'll roll that stone out the way, and God will elevate you. He will bring back to life a ministry you never thought you would ever even have. Stand to your feet. I am in the presence of great Bible study teachers, Sunday school teachers, pastors and evangelists, apostles. I'm in the presence of the five-fold ministry. I am in the presence of multiple locations. I'm in the presence of greatness. I stand with each and every one of my brothers and sisters of Christian Life Church, those who are online and those.
you are here. I stand with you in the standing in the middle of greatness. I stand in something that I ain't never even felt before. I feel a Holy Ghost unction knowing that there is anointing that is locked up in some of you. If you would just robe, if your response would be, you know what, God, I'll just do what I said I would do and watch God show up. You say, Lord, he's just doing a lot of screaming. He's excited. I don't know if that's for me. There comes a time in my life where I just had to realize that I don't care if it's for me or not. I need what he said. I don't care that I'm assistant pastor. I don't care that I, got, I done stepped up a little bit in my in my walk. With God. I don't care about that because if God can elevate, then I'm looking for elevation. If God can lift me up and touch my life, that's what I need, Charles. I don't need to stop where I'm at and be like, well, this is nice. This is great. Let me plant, plant some flowers here. Let me, I'm telling you right now, if God healed your pneumonia and you got some kind of diabetes or something, you need to be like, God, don't stop here. Touch me again, Lord. Like that guy, he's spitting the eyes, and he said, what do you see? I said, I see ministry. No, 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 no. I don't want to see ministry. I want to see with my real eyes that God is willing to touch. Amen. If your response today is that I need everything that God has for me, I want you to lift your hands right now. Lord Jesus, Lord, I ask you to have your way in this place, Lord. Ministry team, get ready to come down front. Lord, right now, Lord. I need you in my life. My response is that I believe the word of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. And it says that his hand is upon me. And that in the moment, in the twinkle of an eye, the only way I'm getting out of here is if I have the Holy Spirit on the inside of me, working in every situation. If your response is you have no power, I need you to come down front. If you need a healing, I need you to come down front. Your response dictates your miracle today. Go ahead and start the music. All well, right, now, if you're ready, if you're ready for God to do something miraculous in your life, if you don't know if it's for you, and you just think maybe it's for me, you need to get down front right now make a declaration and let today. the men of God pray the I prayer of faith help. on you Everybody and watch sing God sing show up. Forever be fruit.